to the episode of the Autumn Windbags, RJ Clifford, Johnny Soto. Let's have some fun today. Razor hey. Ramon. Razor Ramon, holding it down, keeping the TV stand from uh, flying away. 18 days away. 18 rotations of the earth away until week one. Raiders versus Broncos. Dude, team. remember we talked? It was like ninety something. Like, dude, don't just in, in a little a matter of time. It's going to be really short. Now we're gonna less than three up. weeks away. So close. Uh, doing the show a day early today. Um, I will be. By the time you're listening to this, I will be on a plane bound for Singapore. Thirteen hours from LAX to Singapore. Six hour from LAX to Korea. Six hour layover in Korea. Six hour flight to Singapore. Looking at about uh, over thirty hours door to door for me tonight. Mm. So luckily Soda was happy enough to um, do it a day early so we can make it happen. And why uh, not? Very why not do it a day early? Because the Aiden O'Connell hype is here. It's real. Don't know how long it's going to last. Don't know if it will burst. Will it ever burst? When will it burst? It's due no? to perfection right now. It's like it's, it's, it's primed. Right now it's ripe. It's like, it's like Bitcoin in 2019. It's just, yeah, right. oh, beautiful. Now's the time to now. I don't know if it's a time to sell or buy Aiden O'Connell stock, but it's certainly a great time to uh, be in the business of Aiden O'Connell. So, with that said, question of the day, and we'll leave it down in the comment section pinned. A, fill in the blank. Aiden O'Connell is what? So, do you want to go first or second? Is intriguing. Okay. I think he's very intriguing because I, I was telling you, uh, you and Rory earlier today. Rory pulled up some like a highlight reel of his uh, Music City Bowl against Tennessee when he outdueled uh, Tennessee. I think of forty eight forty five in overtime they won, mm -hmm. and he was dealing that game. And that's the first game when I did my uh, one of my my draft mocks, uh, and I picked Hayden O'Connell. I looked at some of his tape, and that's the first the first game that I looked at was that one because it was a you know it was a big bowl game and it was easy to find you know, and I'm like man this guy's pretty good, and I even talked about it in in in, in the show, and then we talked about it because of the Farva thing, but it's the first game tape I saw of him, and uh, he looks exactly the same in, in preseason, uh, getting it out quick, getting it out fast, being accurate. I would say Aiden O'Connell is an asset no matter what happens from here on out the entire league has lifted their eyebrows at the raiders random fourth round rookie quarterback and he wowed people during the preseason i think he'll continue to wow people during the preseason who knows what happens moving forward but the entire nfl has raised their eyebrows and said hmm every offensive coordinator's like i could probably do something with that i could turn him into something so maybe we end up you know not liking him. We draft the quarterback of the, you know, maybe we, we bomb this year and draft the quarterback of the future next year. A million different scenarios can happen. I think we'll get a second rounder for Aiden O'Connell right now. I think we, I think it, on the open market right this second, we can get a second rounder for Aiden O'Connell. It's quarterback, if right? Wanted to. I think we could. Well, last I mean, pick of the fourth round. Now we can get a definitely, second. Yeah, he's definitely the, the, the best producing quarterback uh, rookie or not in the preseason. Mm -hmm. He's played the best, maybe the best rookie player in the preseason overall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I put this as just kind of a post earlier, because I was kind of letting you guys get the brain going, but I'm also curious what you guys live watching think. Question of the day, Aiden O'Connell is fill in the blank. Let us know. So um, you guys are probably sick of us talking about Aiden O'Connell. Luckily for you, every single Tom, Dick, and Harry from here to ESPN is talking about Aiden O'Connell. Everyone has a take on Aiden O'Connell. The hyperbole, the hype, the hits that keep coming on Aiden O'Connell are never ending. So we thought we'd play a game as the, uh, the OGs and the people that... First, we didn't even just start driving the bandwagon. We literally built the bandwagon from scratch. Put it together, planks of wood, screws, little covered wagon. 
some oxen. Like, all right, let's separate. Let's separate the takes because everyone's got a take. So we're going to play a game called Hit, Hype, or Hyperbole. Is the take a hit? Is it like, okay, that's a little too much hype? Or it's like, okay, that's, that's all hyperbole. Slow it down. The brake pedal's on the left. All right. Ready to go, Soto? Right. I'm Have ready. you gone through these yet? Uh, no. Okay. I, I like going in blind when we have uh, when we have media yeah. to do, to look at. First one, Steve Mariucci, NFL Network. This kid is going to be a starter in the National Football League. Your brain's already exploding. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say hit. Okay. I'm gonna say hit. Either either he's gonna start for us because we need to have a, a the, our backup start a game mm -hmm. or he develops and like you said um we draft a quarterback high the next few years mm -hmm. and we flip him to another team and he starts but i, I think, think he definitely has the starting ability i think it's hype but i think it's exactly the right kind of hype um, it's, I think it's still too early to tell something like that, but I love Steve Mariucci talking about our fourth round quarterback, our rookie saying he's going to be a starter. Hey, other 32 offensive coordinators out there. This guy's going to be a starter in this league. Guaranteed. Mariucci's like, I want you to mark this down. I'm going to like, I want you to play this at like, he's the only one talking about Aiden O'Connell that way, but the more hype, the better. So I think it's hype, but the best type of hype. Next one from Luke Easterling of SI.com. It sure looks like the Raiders landed a massive steal on day three of this year's draft with the former Boilermaker. Massive steal. Not just any old steal. Not just a good old-fashioned buy. Massive steal. That's a hit. Ski masks on. SMGs in hand. Bursting into the bank. Looting the vaults, running away on day three. Massive steal. Uh, I think that's a hit. Okay. Just just because he's looked better than our our veteran backup with the same team around him. Uh -huh. And he I he's I said it before, he's he's the best rookie quarterback by far that we've seen. Uh, I'm with you. I think just like pure value wise, like, look, if you can get any, if you can get a backup quarterback, a competent backup quarterback on round two or back, you got pretty good value. You got, if you got yeah. a guy that can, that can play, you know, you can step in, run your offense when needed, you know, terrible, you know, worst case scenario, your starting quarterback goes down week two. He can take over for the season. We think long-term. Yeah, I think, you, I think you got good value. I think you got de decent value. Last pick of fourth round. I got that people feel that way. You're doing great. All right, Ted Wynn of The Athletic. At this point, there isn't much more Aiden O'Connell can do to win the backup job. Nothing more he can do to win the backup job. Hit hype hyperbole. Dude, I, I hate to keep saying hit, but there really is nothing more he can do. He can do more of the same, but there's nothing more that he needs to do other than what he's already done to win the backup job. He can make sure his receivers don't drop his passes. Yeah, right. <laughs> Get him stuck in the face mask so he doesn't drop it. He could uh, he could uh, moonlight as a Cirque du Soleil guy to make sure Mark Davis gives him whatever he wants. I mean, if you want to be the starter, you can be like, hey, I dance for Cirque du Soleil, Mark Davis, just like all your girlfriends. Give me the starting job. Ew. So I guess there's some things he can do. You know, in fairness, there's some things. Uh, Tom, Pelis Tom Pelissero, he was on the uh, Colin Coward show. He said this. He's got a good enough arm. He's good in terms of accuracy. He has a good feel for the passing game. And he's got good feet, too. The only thing he couldn't really do was move. He's a classic NFL pocket passer. Well, who does that sound like the profile on? Another guy who went later in the draft. Tommy Tuck Rule Brady. Hit the third. Hype, hyperbole. That's hype. Okay. That's hype. Now, are all the things he said in the first paragraph true? Yes. But 
to even mention him with a Tom Brady as a comparison, mm -hmm. the only thing that's the same is they were relative unknowns coming out of college. Yeah. Yeah. Unknown Big Ten quarterbacks with a specific game. Yeah. Similar body types. Remember that? I always forget, never forget that uh, Tom Brady draft photo of him just like. God, he looked fucking dad bod before dad easy, bods bro. were dad botting. He had a thick face, bro. <laughs> Aiden O'Connell has the face of an unathletic guy. If that Aiden O'Connell like looks, he has a baby face, but like an old man face at the same time. Yeah, I was uh, I was watching one of his interviews, um, Purdue when they had they beat somebody. He had like acne all over the side of his face, and his like molestache was even thinner. But he's just like all happy. You know what I mean? Like you want to love the guy. He's just like, just so happy to be here. Everyone's doing so great. I couldn't have done it without my team. He's just all goobery, you know? Not farving so at all. So good. There's gonna be a lot of Tom Brady comparisons. Like that's it's like every time in in the UFC, whenever someone's got really good hands or like a really good trash talker, Dana White, the only two boxers Dana White compares anyone to is Muhammad Ali or Mike Tyson. That's it. It's like the same thing. It's like the easy analogy, right? Every quarterback, you're like, you're going to try to compare him to Tom Brady. Just be like, oh, yeah, he's kind of like Tom Brady. Okay. This is all hyperbole. All hyperbole. And I'm here for it. Sanjeet T, good friend, dare I say, best friend of the Autumn Windbags. Make sure you check out his channel as well. I don't say this lightly. Jimmy Garoppolo better not miss an extended amount of time because if he does... Aiden O'Connell may just take over for the Raiders. Get hype or hyperbole. I don't see the hyperbole in this. Mm. Um, it is a little hype, though. We haven't seen them against first string, you know, defenses and schemes and stuff like that. So I think it's a little bit of a hype, a little hype. Is it a guarantee that he's the backup quarterback? Like, I, th I think I think it's pretty much it's just it's it's unsaid, but he's he's the backup. He's played so much better. Um, the uh, the tape don't lie guys had a really great conversation on this that I I want to give them credit for and also chime in on. And they were, they were mentioning something like, "Look, you got a pretty old school, no nonsense, offensive minded coach." In the event that Jimmy Garoppolo goes down, I know you don't think he's injury prone. So in a wild, crazy world where Jimmy G string gets injured and doesn't play. Does he want to hand his entire offense to a fourth round rookie? Maybe, but that's a big ask. And if you, if you step back, right? If you step back and look at the big picture and not just get caught up in how he played in, you know, two halves of a preseason, I can see Josh McDaniels being like, I, I don't want to hand the keys to this car to this young buck that just got his learner's permit. I just, I just don't want to do it. Despite how, despite the potential that we've seen so far. I can see, I'm not saying he's going to, but I can see that argument. I mean, it's not just in games. We, we, we heard about the practices as well, mm -hmm. where he's doing the same exact things. And I think Josh McDaniel sees the talent there. I don't know if he's going to be the guy that's going to play somebody for the name. I think he's going to play play the, the guy for the execution. Um, uh, look, and, and, it, if, if Jimmy G goes down early, right? And this is a situation where he's going to be, you know, surgery out for the season, out for like, like, like Sanjeet said, extended period of time. Why start Hoyer? There's no reason to. You know what I mean? Like, unless we're like, you know, eight and two and you're like, all right, Hoyer gives us a 51% better chance than Aiden O'Connell's 49. Okay. I guess you're going to play, you're going to play the best guy you have. I get it. But in like a realistic situation, like we have a tough four, four games to open with, right? Like, yeah, our first four games are really tough. You know, if we're like one, and, road, if we're like on one and three to start or something and Jimmy G stream, misses some time. It's Aiden O'Connell. It's like, why? Because here's the thing. Let's say, for example, like what you said, eight and two. Uh, we're going into you know week eleven, and I think that 
uh, Hoyer gives us a 51% chance to win that week. What you're not look, looking at is with that game, the next week it would be 51% O'Connell. And then, yeah. and then it'll be a little bit more the next week and a little bit more the next week. Priceless with, experience. Yeah, with, with Hoyer, it's going to be 51% no matter what because you know what you're getting yeah. in him. You know exactly. Yeah. He knows what he's getting. But with Aiden O'Connell, it's going to get higher and higher every week. So with an eight and two, even if even if there are what five and five at that point, mm-hmm. I still think you roll the dice and you go with the guy that can give you a better chance to win later in the season. Brian Baldinger. Baldy. Uh, this is what he said um, in the video that I am currently showing, not what's on the text. Is this Daryl Amonica to Fred Bolitnikoff? Is this the mad bomber right here just letting it fly to Trey Tucker? Hit hype hyperbole. Uh, that's hyperbole. That's a little bit of hyperbole. <laughs> that's what Bollinger does, right? He's like, all right, here's like, like three cool. Too. Here's like three cool X's and O's. Like here's like you know, look at his stance, look at the arm, look at the delivery, and then like a and then like a sonnet as an ode to the player that he's talking about. I love Baldinger's breakdowns. Dude, so, I just looking so. at these throws and the ball placement, mm-hmm. that throw, that throw with on, on the amazing catch by uh, by Tucker, mm-hmm. he was five yards from making his break when Aiden yeah. O'Connell threw that ball. He threw that ball so damn early, and it got there, and it was a catchable ball. And, I mean, it was a great catch, don't get me wrong. But he threw that ball. His anticipation and his ball placement. I've never be, seen. I haven't seen a quarterback throw a ball that early. I, don't, I can't remember it in a while. He needs to be sponsored by AT and T. Anticipation, timing, and touch. It's a done deal. I'm telling you. I need to be. I need to be in charge of sponsorships for the Raiders. So you got AT and T for Aiden O'Connell. The law offices of Jacoby and Myers in Southern California for Jacoby Myers. That's a no brainer. Chasing down ambulances the way he or chases Jacobian down balls, Mayer. right? Well, you got to, you know, use, well, that'll be part of it. He like spray paints the vowel and changes it, you know? Somebody always thinking. Uh, hit, hype, or hyperbole. This one comes from uh, Chris Brockman from the Rich Eisen Show. Aiden O'Connell will win more games for the Raiders this year than Jimmy G. This is my favorite one. Mm. I think that's also hyperbole. The wheels in your head are turning. I can hear them. Do you have more to say? Yeah, it's hyperbole. Okay. I think, I mean, if he plays, if they play the same amount of games, it's, it, there's a lot going into it, man. It depends on which games they are. Like if, if, uh, if uh, Jimmy G gets the first, the first eight, right. Or the first nine mm-hmm. with like the hardest four games to start the season. And that like, was, you know. that was the one part of this from like, well, the, the, Jimmy, we, we could be one and three, and Jimmy G could be really beat up in those first four games. Like, there's some good defenses. Some good that's, a rough like, that's a rough four. That's a rough four games. It, it's it's rough, and but so then you got the road, man. The first three are on the road, and then I you think got one of the last. I think we're one of the last teams to have a home game, and you got Aiden O'Connell playing the last thirteen, or at least a good chunk of it. You know, that's you know, yeah, yeah. it's hyperbole, but it's one that made me like, stop and think. Like it should. This is why it was such a great like overreaction Monday topic. You're like, okay, that's an overreaction. Ooh, but uh, if X leads to Y, which leads to Z, there could be Look, something there. We have we have the scale right, and if it's just a touch more overreaction, then it's an overreaction. But how yeah. much of an overreaction? Not that much. Uh, last one, and this is the thing: I cannot confirm that this quote is real. I've used the Google machine for like 45 minutes trying to find the source of this. So I don't know if he said it in a radio interview. I don't know if this was told like person to person. So with that said, I can't validate the authenticity of this statement and who it came from. But according to this person on Twitter, which is good enough for me for the sake of this show, Tom Brady on the Raiders quarterback, Aiden O'Connell. His decision-making, poise in the pocket, and overall play these last two weeks have been impressive. I'd go far so far as to say he's been the most impressive rookie quarterback so far. Kid's got a bright future. 
from the guy who Tom Pelissero says reminds him of him, Tom Brady on O'Connell. Yeah, that's not that's not a far reach to say that he's the the most impressive rookie quarterback so far. I think the hyperbole is I think this quote was made up from Tom Brady, but it was a hit from a made up source. Yeah. So it's is that is that a hit or hyperbole? Hit, but a hyperbole at the same time. <laughs> and there's quite a bit of hype sprinkled in too. Yeah. Not not a real person, but that's anyway. Dom, that's Dom Grady. So a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of a lot of hits. I feel like I feel like you said. I feel like, I feel like the national media is pretty pretty accurate, more or less, on what they're saying about Aiden O'Connell, which is rare because you know they're a little different than a lot of other um, platforms. It's like, all right, you need to deliver ratings at this ten fifteen to ten thirty window, or you're out. So it's like, all right, hyperbole, Tom Brady comparisons. This guy's going to Super Bowl. But I feel like it was more or less. I think the national media has got a pretty decent takes on Aiden O'Connell. Well, you know, it's it's it's, like it's the preseason. None of these games count. So you're looking for the best story, like you said. Mm-hmm. And what's a better story than a, a team that wanted to hire Tom Brady, that had sold a minority stake in it, being a, you know, a Big Ten quarterback, kind of overlooked, kind of like, you know, nerdy looking. Uh, but going out there and balling out like it's what if Aiden O'Connell blossoms like Tom Brady and just like the sexiest man alive starts dating supermodels bro he gets on that TB12 you know you never know he might figure lean out thins out a little bit he actually has a chin he doesn't have a chin you know like Aiden O'Connell doesn't he has the least the least athletic face of any human I know and he's just been balling out Great. It's so hard on the kid, man. I love to see it. It's like when you see like a really fat boxer have like really sweet hands, like an Andy Ruiz. Oh like, God. He's such his a good hands are like, puncher. His hands are like butter and he flows Quick so and well. Sharp. But that's because he, just, he gets he just like just a little bit. He just he, uh. but he gets like his gut moving in centrifugal motion, and so it just like aids his punches. You know what I mean? Dude, when he knocks people out, they're knocked out on their feet and then they t- they timber. Yeah. And then he hits them three times as they're going yeah. down. Yeah. Cause he's just like, just so smooth, you know, just like Wilder. Wilder will punch somebody and he'll like, they'll like fly across the ring and then yeah. fall down. Like Ruiz hits him, pop, pop, and they're just like, mm. I love watching. Maybe it's because I turned 40 and you know, I'm just like a washed up has been or never was one of the two, but watching unathletic dudes do amazing athletic feats. It just gives me so much joy. Like I loved watching Roy Nelson knock people out way more than Francis and Gano. This is like, yeah, you're Francis Ngannou. You're 6'4", 260, 3% body fat. Like, of course you'd be knocking people out. And there's Roy Nelson, who's literally my size. Just fat as shit. It's like you're a 5'9", OP white dude. Just overhand riding fools. Just go! Oh, sweet mullet. So sweet. So sweet. Uh, so I don't know if this is good news or bad news, but um, Aiden O'Connell's become self-aware. Logan Reaver on Twitter. Aiden O'Connell, when asked if he knew he was a meme, he replied, Oh, God, what did I do? Which is the most Aiden O'Connell thing ever to not know that he's a meme looking like Farva. I I also love how we act like we've known him for 20 years when really we've just been like following him for a few weeks. (laughs) Yeah, it's been a few. I mean, to be fair, it's been a few months. It was probably when when, when was the draft? We we brought it up pre-draft. We talked about it. It was March. It was in March. We brought it it up in March. And then, and then when we got him in April, we were all stoked. And then it was kind of quiet until, until preseason. He didn't start thick dick until they put the pads on. Yeah. So the if uh, if Josh McDaniels, let's say the Raiders go seventeen and zero this season, Woo. if they don't have Super Trooper quotes as their audibles, Josh McDaniels is fired immediately on the spot. It's just it's just too great. So I was like, I was wrangling up some of my favorite, favorite uh, Farva quotes. Okay. You tell me what the audible should be. Like, this is the audible. This is the line. You tell me what the change is. All right. Ready? Okay. All right, assholes. Quit talking about me. I think like a quarter, I think like a draw because quit talking about me. It's not about me. So you like, you drop like a five step drop. And just hand it off to Jacobs. So you're not talking about me. It's going to Jacobs. I think it sounds it sounds more like you're 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 killing the play. You're killing it. Okay. All right, or killing killing the plat killing yes. the pass. 
Yeah, killing it, killing it, killing kill, it. Kill, kill, kill. Okay. Instead of killing it, you say, all right, I'll quit talking well, about That's why me. I feel like you go to a draw, right? It's like, stop talking about me. Like, oh, it's like a third and long. It's not about me. Draw play. It's about the other guy. Yeah. All right, what oh, else we yeah. got? Pop a couple of Viagra and issue tickets with raging mega huge boners. <laughs> oh, that's, you're, you're, you're going deep. You're dialing it up. Yeah. You're thick dick in that pass. Oh, yeah. That's, that's going deep. Hail Mary. Because that's what we want. You want her squealing Hail Mary when you're thick dick in your Viagras. Oof. There you go. All that right. Well, yeah. Do you want to dip the size of your meal for a quarter more? Want me to punch inside your face for free? Oh, that's a quarterback sneak. Got to punch it in to okay. the end zone. It's like, oh, because uh, normally you're like, all right, guess the one play where the quarterback gets to kind of be the bully a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Unless there's like a double reverse and you got someone passing and, you know, you've seen the quarterbacks just like kind of, they, they act like they're just like trying to squeeze into an elevator type block. You know what I mean? They just put their shoulders up and get skinny and just like try to like, all right, I made him slow down 7%. I've done my job. The quarterback sneak is them being like, all right, I'm going to lower my helmet and hit somebody. It's their one time, right? Punch the size of your face for free. He's getting ready. He's getting ready. Are you gonna predict your cat licking its nuts again? He's gonna. He's getting ready. He's he's doing it. He's doing the thing. No, yeah, it looks like he's just laying down. I don't know. You might be wrong on this one. All right, maybe. You might not really know how often your your cat licks its own penis the way that you think you do. Okay. You guys gotta work on your relationship if you don't know when your cat's gonna lick. It I think he head. heard you. Look at him. He's heads up now. He's like, oh, like, I'm gonna do it now. He's like, oh, ah, my dick does feel licky right now. You're just jealous, Clifford. Yeah, maybe I am. Next one. License and registration, chicken fucker. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like that's I feel like that's pointing out a blitz. Yeah, it's like oh, license and registration, like fuck that chicken fucker, like that guy's that guy's blitzing. Point pointing to like an outside backer or safety or something. So it's like yeah, he's he's changing his protection. Yep. Oh, oh, oh shit! I got you, good you fucker. I think that's that's after that's after one of those plays worked. That's like a that's like a that's like a two point conversion play after you just dropped a sixty yard palm. I think that's like not, only, not only not only not only to just score a touchdown on you, we're gonna get two more. They got you good, fucker. I think that's uh when he when he uh, when his cadence like gets the defense to freaking go off sides. Oh yeah 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 <laughs> yeah that's what it is. The hard count. Hard count. That's the hard count. That's not an audible. That's 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 just the hard count he says in the huddle. Got you good, fucker. All right, two more. Will you just order a large farva? I don't want a large farva. I want a goddamn liter of cola. That's when, that's him changing from a run play to a pass play. I don't want to run the ball. I want to fucking go deep. But it's the ex but that's the exact same size. Like a large and a liter is like the same thing. So I almost feel like like instead of running like a fifteen yard out, it's a fifteen yard in or something like that. Like it's the same volume, like it's the same amount of yardage you're trying to get, but you're just speaking in French before I rip your fucking lips off. <laughs> All right, last one. I forgot this line, and I've seen Super Troopers a hundred times. Guess that's it for the old locker, huh? He stinks like ass, but I'll sure miss her. I guess you can say that about all my girls. <laughs> That's that's right before they uh, they um, they beat him up and then uh, yeah. can't come the to the toilet. Yeah, I think that's like, I think that's like a bread and butter play that you've ran for ten weeks, but now defensive coordinators are kind of keen on it a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it's like, all right, it's like it's a play that we've run every single week for you know three quarters of the season, and you see the defense is finally adjusted to it. And so you say, "All right, we're checking out of this. We're checking out of our. We're checking out of our bread and butter. Everyone's caught up to it." Yeah, it's like like the the double in on one side and the post on the other. Yeah, it's like a Josh McDaniels freaking staple, right? Yeah, just any sort of dig route or something, you know. It's just kind of it's like, all right. So that's it. Those are all the audibles. There you go. There you go, Josh McDaniels. Yeah. You're welcome. We just saved you four hours of work. There's your audibles. No one will see it coming either. Take I don't want to see. I don't want Jimmy G using these audibles either. This is Aiden O'Connell only. Jimmy also, G has his special his special blend. Can can we? Yeah. His is his is uh, conversations you have in the back of a VIP room negotiating with a stripper. Those are the lines. It's like, oh, condom on or condom off? Eh, that'll be two hundred bucks more. Oof. <laughs>
That's pretty steep. Yeah. Uh, can we make can we make a ruling real quick before we move on? Okay. Can we do everything we can to end the AOC nickname for Aiden O'Connell and just try to keep it be Farva? Cool. Like AOC is already a nickname for somebody, and do we really want them named after politicians? Like I don't even care what side of the aisle you want you're on. Like yeah, it's the same nickname as a politician. No, you just the, call him Farva. Farva. It seems like a no brainer. Or the boiler playmaker, also acceptable. Nah. Landfill we're going, we're going with Farva. Landfill Look. also acceptable if you want to change it up, but it's it's Farva as the main one. No hate on anyone who jumped on. None whatsoever. You know, I love content creators, but you have to give, pay homage to who said it first. And that was us. Pre draft, Farva. How about we uh, pop a couple of Viagra and issue tickets with raging mega huge boners? <laughs> raging mega huge boners. I love how, like, how little people knew about Viagra back then, because like not everyone yeah. could get it. It's like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, it makes your dick bigger. Like, mm. it's, it's 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 just like an extra. Well, it does give you a you know, it does give you a s solid chub. Not gonna, not gonna lie. <laughs> Fucking RJ with the blue chew. Oh yeah. Oh, it's great. I'm more of a Cialis guy than a Viagra guy. I like oh, I like just, uh, whenever, I like whenever the times right. <laughs> yeah, well, like it can work for another forty eight hours. You know what I mean? So like. You, you know, you've been drinking too much at night, pop one in, two hours later, you're ready to go, and you're still good to go the morning after. You know what I mean? Like, I like, I got a longevity out of it. You know what I mean? I like to play the long game. Yeah, I like bet. Drugs. Yeah. So, uh, I feel like in, um, we have a responsibility to Raider Nation to keep the Aiden O'Connell hype as high as possible, but in a small little responsibility to the truth. The uh, biggest Debbie Downer in all of football, Josh Dubo, did tweet this out. And it is something worth considering. And I'm very curious what you think, Joe, uh, Soto. Partial list of quarterbacks with 120-plus passer rating in the preseason since 2015, minimum three attempts. And you went and named other guys that have looked about as good as Aiden O'Connell. E.J. Emanuel twice, Kyle Slaughter twice, Brett Hundley, go Bruins. Chase Daniel, Chris Strebler, Cooper Rush, Kevin Hogan, Luke McCowan, Matt Barkley, Nathan right Peterman, Skylar Thompson. Does this uh, step on the dick of the Aiden O'Connell hype, or is this just Josh Tubo being Mr. Debbie Downer? No, it's just him being Debbie Downer. It's fair context. No, yeah, I, 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 I'm not saying it's unfair for him to say that, but um, this game is different from even five years ago, mm -hmm. the game that we play now. Uh, it's a lot more spread out. It's a lot more, uh, a lot more. It's a lot more tra uh, translatable from from college. Yeah, the the play and the, and the play calling and and the sets and everything is. Is a lot is a lot more closely related to how these players played. I mean, Aiden O'Connell didn't even he was never under center at, at Purdue, mm -hmm. uh, so that's a little bit different for him. But you know, it's 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 a lot closer than it's ever been to how these quarterbacks played in college. And I think there's something to say about the eye test as well with Aiden O'Connell and just not just the numbers, but how well those passes are getting thrown. Right, throwing guys open like we like we talked about a million times. Anticipation. Timing, touch, his comfortability in the uh, in the huddle, and you know the adjustment he made, like what was supposed to be like a fade route last game, and like he throws it in. It was. Uh, I think there's more to it than just the numbers. Yeah, because look, like that's what Josh Dubo deals with his numbers. Yeah, when, when, when the numbers like suit his 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 uh, his argument, he'll take all context out. But when the numbers don't suit his argument, he'll you know throw a bunch of context in there so we're not and here's the context we're not looking at how many of those games were like justin fields games mm -hmm. where he throws the ball negative seven air yards but has 160 yards and two touchdowns yeah because the receiver did all the work 
that's not he's not throwing screens and little you know dump offs and stuff like that. He's throwing the ball down the field. Mm-hmm. He meaning Aiden O'Connell. Pronouns Bell. Farva. Farva Bell. Yeah, like I think of Josh Dubow. Like this is what this guy does. This is what the guy does all day long. He's on the internet trolling Raider fans with math. I can't think of any, I can't describe anyone who probably gets legged less than someone I would describe like that. Like talk about like not the life of the party, like all day long. Let me just troll Raider fans. Not even something clever. Like if you're funny and troll, troll people, it's like, okay, I respect your game. Like you're getting under people's skin. You're being sarcastic. You're having fun. Okay. I get, I get why you're doing that. It makes sense. You know, and to be fair to us, Raider nation, we can be pretty easy to trigger at times and it's been a yeah. rough couple decades like we're, we're, we're not Look, there's there's it's, it's it's a good it's a fun fan base to trigger but he doesn't even do it a fun way it's just like here's math that makes you mad i'm gonna go jerk off in the corner now i'm josh Dubin. yeah he, he's like the modern day unfunny andy kaufman like he doesn't care if anyone else likes what he's doing as long as he's he loving. likes it he's yeah. good with it yeah uh ready for some raiders news sure why not this is uh, the, the non Aiden O'Connell portion of our show. This is the shorter part. Uh, Josh Jacobs watch 2023 continues. Uh, the latest one, uh, there was a report that Josh Jacobs is going to end his holdout and return to the Raiders before week one. There was a report that came out. Josh Jacobs replies to that tweet, damn, I don't remember saying that. And then deleted it. Soto, does this look like a development in the Josh Jacobs saga or just misinformation from both sides? Negotiations are running hot. And so everyone's trying to throw lies out there to benefit their side. Does it feel like one or the other more to you? Um, it, 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 it feels like Josh Jacobs is covering his ass. Okay. Maybe because he didn't want to get it out there. That he's look. I'm still in the very high likelihood that he's going to sign a week in, in, on that dead week when there's no game, right? Yeah. He's going to sign and, and show up and, and and practice for that game. That's I I just I just feel that. Now, does that hurt his negotiating up until that point? Yeah, yeah, if if people if it's reported that he's going out there and he's going well look, we all know he's going to be there. I, I've heard it from multiple sources that he's going to be there the week, you know, before the season starts. That does hurt his negotiating. Him saying that can also hurt negotiations as well. Uh and it sounds like some people in his camp are like, "Bro, you got to stop it. You got to stop with this shit. You're making yourself look bad." You're hurting negotiations right now. Right now, all you need to do is just keep quiet and lay low. We'll try to take care of the rest. So if it wasn't true, I think he would have kept it up. If it was true, there's no reason for him to take it down. This, this is what I don't understand. He's negotiating for nothing. Like he's holding out for nothing. Like it's not like, all right, we're in a contract dispute. You know, I want more money. You want I mean, to pay less. He, he can do what Barkley did and he can sign a bigger deal. See, that was such a weird anomaly. Like that was, that's, that's the exception, not the rule. But that, but that's what he's, he's banking on now. He wants to sign a bigger deal than the franchise. But, but even then that bigger deal was like 1 million more dollars with crazy incentives. He's probably never going to hit. Like it's, it was more of that felt more like a gesture as opposed to Jacob's getting more money. Right. Which in negotiations that happens all the time. Right. Like I mm-hmm. sometimes guys just want to leave feeling respected as opposed to leave guaranteeing more money. So there's something there's something. To there's that. a chance. There's a chance that, that they do that for him. And like uh, Lloyd Christmas say, so you're saying there's a, there's chance. a chance. So look, if he's not going to if he's not going to sign until the week before the season starts anyway, he needs to maximize any probability that he has to get a bigger deal than what's available for him the week before the season starts. I I, I don't think that's uh, that's a possibility. I, I mean, don't think I'm not saying it's yes or no, yeah. but I'm trying to make sense of all this. This is what this is what this is my take of what's happening. I think it's two things. I think one, as we've talked about it before, 
Josh Jacobs isn't fined for missing preseason games, training camp, any of this stuff. He doesn't, he doesn't lose a dime. So he's like, why would I work for free? I'm getting yeah, my ten point one million dollars. Month ago, right? If I if I signed my franchise tender three months ago or the week of you know the first game, I make the same amount of money. So why would yeah. I go to training camp for free? Right? I, I think that's part of it. And I don't two, want to play in preseason. Like right? I don't want him to put me in the games. Like why would like I why work for free? I think it's that. Two, I think this part the tweet is I think Jacobs wants to send his exact message when he returns. I think when he walks through that door week zero, it's, Hey guys, I'm back. I missed you. I couldn't be without you. I'm going to back you guys up. We're going to go do some big things. I'm yours. I had a chance, you know, I wasn't going to abandon my team. I think he wanted to deliver that message when he returns this way. It's kind of like, all right, instead of Josh having a change of heart or being there for his teammates, it's just a negotiation ploy. It's just math. It's like, oh, he had it all planned out, and this is when he's coming out. So I think it's those two things. I think it's like, look, why would I work for free? And I want to control the message of my return. Yeah, I want to control the narrative and the timing. Yeah. Uh, in other Raider news, people are not really too hyped about uh, the Raiders going 2-0 and in the preseason. The uh, betting slips are starting to pour in for the season, season bets. And, you know, there's the big one, if you're betting a whole, a whole season, is over or under, right? How many games is my team going to win? What's the over under? The Raiders over under is 6.5, right? They, uh, If you bet the under, you want them to win six games or less. You bet the over, you want them to win seven games or less. They are number one in bets, but not the ones you like to see. Yeah. They are number one in the number of tickets that are bet on the under. That's just number of tickets, whether it's a dollar or a million dollars. They're number one. They're also number one in unders on the handle. So most money. So the masses are betting the under on the Raiders and the big money are betting the under on the Raiders. Six and a half. They were six and a hook. Six and 11 last season. So people are saying, all right, they're at least as bad as last season or worse. The overall masses. It's not like they're, all right, they're top 10. All right, they're not really, uh, they're top five. People aren't really buying the hype. Number one in the masses and in the money. Yeah. All betting the under. I don't know that this necessarily speaks to the team and the team not getting better. I just think we have one of the hardest schedules in the NFL this year. Yeah, um, our division. Just our division and just Super Bowl champs. Chargers we're playing the, we're playing the AFC talented. East, yep. which are, you know, even though, like, I mean, the least talented team still is still has a Bill Belichick defense. Yeah. You know, so, um, yeah, it's, I think it's more so that than anything else. But there's a lot, also a lot of unknowns. There's also a lot of, like, you know, we've seen Jimmy G, but, I, I mean, I think this is kind of disrespectful to the weapons that we have mm -hmm. and to the play caller that Josh McDaniels is, but... Oh, he had all the weapons and and Shanahan in, in in at the at the Niners. Well, we have a pretty damn good play caller ourselves, and we have pretty damn good weapons ourselves. Um, it just a lot of unknowns defensively. You know, it looks like they're more in tune. Like they're they're sharper. Like they got more sizzle, more pop. But we don't know yet because it's not against you know number one live competition. A lot of those, a lot of those uh, tickets may have come in before uh, Farva started, you know, throwing that freaking thing around. But so the good part about all this is, you ask any season better, any sharp, anyone that's been grinding for multiple decades in Las Vegas sports books or sports books around the country, and they will all tell you, you go against the public. If the public swings widely one way. You go the other way because it pushes the line in that direction. You get value going the other way, right? Um, Yanni the Greek, who does a lot of like sports betting for the UFC, he made a great analogy the other day. He's like, he loves betting UFC fights Saturday night during college football season because so many guys will lose their ass in college football and chase fights at night. It's like, oh, I lost my ass in college football all day long. I'm down 500 bucks. Let me get it all back, you know, betting the main event. You know, right? And that pushes lines, right? Dumb, when dumb money comes in, 
it automatically moves it the other way. You lick his nuts again? No, nope, he's still thinking. He's, he's getting shy now. Now this he's just teasing me. Now he's just teasing. Now he's like, oh, yeah, they're on dick suck. That, that, that's, that's, that's the launch position right there. That's that's where he normally gets it done. You the lumbar all loosened up so you can get down there. But, yeah, you know, it's – it's. Uh, so, so if that says anything to what Vegas thinks is going to happen, it's the over. If the public goes – because it feels like a baited number, six and a half. Like, yeah, they, on paper, they're worse than last season. They only won six last season. They don't have Waller. On, on paper, they look they're worse than last season. You think so? Yeah, the Chandler Jones hype gone. Um, I don't. I think I know you don't think so, but I think Derek Carr is viewed as a better quarterback than Jimmy Garoppolo. I think that's a big. But one. The, th- the thing is, is it's look. In the, Josh Jacobs had the season of his life last season. Is the, that going to repeat? The issue that we're running into here is we're looking at the player, not the production. Mm-hmm. You're telling me that that's the best that Derek Carr can give you last year? No. No, so it's literally so, the worst. So he does. So Jimmy G doesn't have to be better than Derek Carr. He has to has to be better than what Derek Carr played last year to be an improvement. That, but I don't know how many people feel that way about Jimmy G. I think I think nationally, it's like, look, you're on the most forgiving offense in football with the Niners. Like, are you really that good? And I think it's better. Like it's short, short. You know, it's uh, it's uh, short memories. Like they're not thinking back to his first half season with the Niners when he played well. They're just thinking of him getting hurt every season and just dumping it off to all stars, right? And also history too. Like you know, it pains me every time to say it. Raiders have been basically bad for twenty years. It's just like yeah, yeah. You know, you made in the last twenty years. You made a pretty good living betting the under <laughs> season totals on the Raiders, God right? Damn. Like, and this is our chance to spit in the face of everybody. But I. You know, let's give them all big old shit burger to eat. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I think a lot of bets, I think the Raiders get more bets than the average team or than most teams because one, the huge fan base and two, they're based in Vegas. Like you fly into Vegas, you're like, oh, I'm here. There's Raiders stuff everywhere. That's th- subliminally bet on the Raiders. I think that's so much too of how people bet. Like we, you know, there's sharps, right? You like you're doing the math and like, oh, okay, what's, what's the wind velocity at Arrowhead in January before I bet my over under? So oftentimes, it's like, oh, man, I just want 100 bucks playing Baccarat. Oh, shit, the Raiders? Oh, they suck. Give me the under, 100 bucks. You know, there's a lot of that, too. I'm saying that as a guy that's where he's made a lot of bets. That exact mentality. He's like, oh, yeah, there's a lot. Here you go. Take my money. Yeah, I, I've had to talk to you and a buddy of ours. I had to tell look, man, once you start betting, like, women's college softball, like, I'm going to have to stop hanging out with you. <laughs> <laughs> dog that's days of get, summer man that's just getting a little too deep for me if you don't bet baseball you start getting desperate during the summer you start getting real desperate you're just looking for shit to bet on yeah raiders and what went back yes sir raider jackson gaming i think if it ends up being uh three tight ends horstead is out because he can't block so we got four pretty good tight ends. I think they're playing well enough where, you know, maybe they'll keep all four. But like we said last week on the same topic, we're probably going to keep one or two more receivers than most teams because we got so many and they're mo- mostly pretty good. We're probably going to keep have to, have to keep a lot more DBs because most of them aren't good. And we want to make sure we can at least build depth and rotational guys and find somebody. I don't know if they're going to go four tight ends. Maybe. They run enough two tight end sets where... They might want to. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Um, I don't know that uh, Fotheringham is uh, garnering a lot of attention across the league. I think he maybe still might be able to stash him another year. Because mm-hmm. look, guys, if if we, squad, if, if, if we drop somebody and a team picks them up, they have to put them on the 53. Just, just know that. You, you can't just pick them up and then, ha-ha, I'm going to put them on my practice squad. No, it doesn't work that way. You yeah. pick up somebody from waivers, they got to be on your 53. So I don't know that too many people are going to pay, are paying that much attention to a fourth string tight end from the Raiders. Jess Luna Malfoy. Just Luna Malfoy. Hope Gruden brings down Roger and the dirty scumbags that opened this mess. Talking about how the John Gruden saga is continuing and how the NFL is deathly afraid of him. And I was wondering this, Soto, you tell me, should we be rooting for John Gruden 
or a, rooting against John Gruden because he has the potential ability to shake the very foundation of football if this goes nuts, right? Like, let's say it's like scorched earth, all 32 o- owners and all their like terrible shit that they say, all the terrible shit that they do, mistresses, whatever, right? Like, with all the dirty laundry of everyone in the NFL comes out. Do we want that? Or do we want to say, look, kick the NFL in the dick, get Roger Goodell fired, get your revenge, John Gruden. Sometimes the fire can, uh, what's it called? Like clean, disinfect, yeah. right? Like a fire is going to disinfect the scum in the NFL. Um. I think we he I think he should just burn it down. Cause look, yeah. it's it's you can't you can't overlook with a good conscience how the Raiders have been treated compared to other teams. Okay. Okay. And it could be a little it's like, dude, does the NFL really care that much that Tom Brady was gonna work for the for work for the Raiders and owned a part of the Raiders? Is it that big of a deal? No, they're just fucking with them, yeah. right? Um, and there's something as small as that, or something as large as making sure they vote against Al Davis' new stadium in Los Angeles, and then like the very next month, voting to build and fund a hundred percent the Vikings' new stadium. Yeah. So it's 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 been a long-standing thing to fuck with the Raiders. It it I, I, a lot of people are asking me. Like, why is it such a big deal? Well, it's such a big deal because it's an uneven playing field. You're creating an uneven playing field when you're when you're targeting a team and forcing them to fire their coach midseason when you have knowledge of every other team doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. So it's unfair advantage for every other team who gets to choose whether they're going to fire their coach or not when you're forcing midseason a team to fire their coach who has everything going for them right then uh, the way that coach wants it to go, right? Uh, that's why it's unfair, and the, and hope we might even get some comp picks out of this thing. Yeah, uh, that's what I was talking. I was talking to somebody else. And I'm like, hey man, I didn't even think about that. If that the NFL fr- like intentionally fucked with, because look, if other teams knew what was going on, we may get some of their picks. Hey, look, you forfeit your pick to the Raiders because you knew about this shit and you played along, so that's your punishment. We don't know. This could even bring because of the amount, only because of the amount of money involved. This could bring some sanction by the U.S. government, and the government has gotten involved in uh, in sports in the past. They got involved in strikes with baseball. They got involved in strikes in basketball. They've gotten involved in certain things. They got, they got involved with drug steroid, testing in baseball. The, the they, steroid trial. They got. Involved they can't in wait to get involved in sports. They, they, they love involved, the spotlight. If, if they get involved in the NFL. This whole fucking draft court, this all this bullshit is gone. Where the guy who pans down the punishment is the same guy that that reviews the punishment. Like all that stuff, you kiss that shit goodbye. There's gonna be an impartial person not chosen by the league. It's gonna be an impartial person chosen by a third party to make sure that everything is run and everything is run fairly. Because right now we know as Raider fans, we know for sure that this shit is not fair. What should uh, the Raiders ask for if a judge came to the autumn win bags? So like, all right, all right, the ed- the NFL was in the wrong. What do you guys want? Okay, well, who who knew? Who was implicitly involved in this going down? I want I want dollars because what they're going to find the teams to give the money back to the NFL. What does that do? Every Raider fan gets. One NFL cheerleader okay, of their choice. Now you're going to be choice. silly about it, or you're going to ask me the truth. I'm dead serious. Every no, Raider that's fan, gonna, that's never going to happen. Cheerleader they want for a weekend. Oh boy! And there'll be, a, there'll be a lottery system. I'm there'll being be a serious about system. this. Um, and you know you can't do anything like too crazy, but you know. Okay, now come fucking around, and what what would you think rights. would be a real thing? Um, I think like another. I think. Well, this is the problem. I think Mark Davis is going to ask for things like greater profit share, uh, you know, better percentage of, you know, like Jersey revenue, you know, things like that. I think they'll be like that kind of thing. Um, 
I think competitively, there you can get real creative. It's like, all right, teams that wronged us, we get five home games in a, in a row with you guys. Like, you guys have to come on the road to us. When I'd rather have the picks. Picks, too. Picks is the easy one. Right? That's, that's the easiest one to do. For you forfeit, that you forfeit first and second round pick the next two years to this team. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. A chunk of your salary cap goes to the Raiders? Oh. Uh, I think I think it's better off just to find. That way we have the, we have the cash available to sign, you know? Don't have to worry about dipping into our own cash. I don't think cash is a problem anymore with the Raiders. Take, give me the salary cap. Give me the, give me the competitive advantage. Um, Dutch Master 707. Drop the number four Favre jersey that has the autumn wind bag logo. Farva jersey. Funny you brought that up, Dutch Master 707. The store is officially open. Um, the link's down. In the in the uh, in the in the description, uh, just real basic stuff right now. We got the autumn wind bags logo, t-shirts, hats, water bottles, all that kind of stuff. We got some Farva stuff coming. We got some Jimmy G string stuff coming. We got some uh, Hunter Renfro stuff coming, and we're gonna trickle it all out. We can't give it to you guys all at one time. We got some cool ideas coming out. We think, and it's not just. And we really appreciate guys who just want to wear the logo. Like, hey, I love the autumn wind bags, cool shirt, and we're gonna get. Quality shirts. None of this like Hanes beefy tea bullshit. We're gonna get some quality shirts. Those beefy, just like those gilded fucking stretchy neck things. Good shit. We're getting the, the good stuff, and we appreciate you guys wearing that. But we're also gonna get stuff that you're gonna want to wear and show off. Where your friends are just like, "Where'd you get that shirt? What does that mean?" You've got a cool story behind it. So that's coming. Also, memberships are open. You can uh, subscribe to the Autumn Wind Bags. You can get cool icons, emojis, stuff like that. Uh, and at the middle price. You guys can send in an MP4, a video, about 20 seconds or less, with a comment, question, making fun of Soto's cat, whatever you want it to be. And we'll share it on the autumn wind bags. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. We got a lot of stuff coming out with the, uh, the start of the season coming, and we want to make sure we got it all out by the time the season does. So uh, a lot of exciting stuff coming for you fellow wind bags out there. We appreciate yes, you guys coming along for the ride. Uh, I will be uh, on the road this weekend, so Soto will have the post-show solo. Post-show Soto. Um, I'm sure he'll do great. Oh, what are you looking for in that game? You got the last game of the season coming up. Last game of the, the preseason. I mean, it's going to be basically just like how many receivers are we keeping? How many tight ends are we keeping? Yeah. I'm looking for the position battles. I'm looking for for, for battles on the offensive line. There's going to be a lot of battles there. Defensive tackle. Is starting? Going to be you, think, you think the starting any starting positions still up for grabs? Like uh, we're going to see in the preseason. I think I think we might see some starting caliber players, but okay. also like who's going to be the backups? Who are going to be the backups? Right? Who are going to sell out? I don't yeah. think we see a single starter. I think I think there's still position battles open, but we won't see any starters this preseason. But it will be who's. Who's the primary backups at like right guard? Which which receivers make the cut? Which DBs make the cut? Three or four tight ends. Um, in the secondary, yeah. who's going to step up? Who's going to step out? Uh, can which linebackers are going to step up and fill out the roster? Stuff like that. You were so mad when I brought up. Oh yeah, Raider fans get a cheerleader. From one of the other 31 NFL teams. No, you were so being, pissed. I was being serious. I'm like, okay, now you're just making this into And a I bit. wasn't being serious. How long have you known me? How often can I be really serious for like 20 straight minutes? I don't know if it's possible. It just, it's. I couldn't it's get through very, my wedding vows without throwing some dirty jokes in. It's a very serious subject. It's a subject. That, it's something that really affected our entire franchise. And it's something that. We know we've seen, you know, uh, evidence of for quite some time. I'm therapeutic of, for you. I think I'm doing a good thing for you. I should be charging you. Listen, I'll take the cheerleader. Fees. I'll take the cheerleader. <laughs> nope. Nope. You said you said you were not happy with that take. Um, you have forfeited your rights to a cheerleader. I didn't say I wasn't happy with it. I, I said you can have, you can have the draft pick. I'll have the cheerleader. So everyone's happy. You wouldn't last and anyway. Oh, I don't need to last. <laughs> I'm in and out, baby. I've been married. I'm 40. I know, I know what I'm doing. I'm in and out. As long as the, as long as the tick is up, we're good. Right. Until then, 
Knock on wood if you're with me. Hey, hey, you made it to the end of our video. Great job. I know you want more. Go ahead and click the next video. And if you're feeling crazy, go ahead and subscribe.